It's Monday and it is time to catch up with our new Cargo Mastermind. Hello and welcome to Cargo Masterminds. My name is Reggie John. Hong Kong International Airport has been the world's busiest airport by cargo traffic since 2010. The airport handles around 5 million metric tons of total cargo throughput annually. In 2019, the annual cargo throughput was 4.8 million metric tons. That is about 42% of Hong Kong's total external trade. The airport has over 100 airlines operating flights to more than 180 cities globally. Hong Kong Air Cargo Terminals Limited, or HACTL, is one of the world's leading air cargo terminals with the unique world-class facilities, highly efficient operations, and innovative technologies. Founded in 1971 and commercially opened in 1976, Hactil today has an annual handling capacity of 3.5 million metric tons. Hactil continues to invest and adopt the internationally recognized best practices to improve the quality and efficiency of cargo operations. Hactil boasts of its neutrality and provides all its airline customers with unbiased service. The pandemic affected cargo volumes at Hong Kong like every other airport in the world. But the busiest cargo airport in the world did not stop under the pandemic stress. It never failed a single customer and helped the global air cargo industry to keep supply chains open for everything that was critical to people around the world. My guest today is Wilson Kwong, Chief Executive of Hactel. He took charge as the Chief Executive of Hactel in March 2018. He leads his team at its terminal in Hong Kong that is designed to keep delivering the most efficient and best possible cargo handling operations all its customers round the clock. As the chief executive, Wilson Kwong, tries to make Hactel a reliable partner for its customers in shaping the future together. Wilson, welcome to Cargo Masterminds. Thank you for inviting me, Reggie. Thank you. It's really nice uh, seeing you and uh, greetings everyone from Hong Kong. Wilson, uh, Bring us up to speed with what has been happening at Hactel. Uh, it's been a year since the, the crisis began and pandemic hit Hong Kong much before the other places uh, in the world. Indeed, I think most of the recent changes at Hactel have all been related to the COVID crisis, whether it's protecting our colleagues uh, through homeworking, uh, change procedures, upgraded and better use of IT infrastructure necessitated by remote working, or simply changes in our daily activities due to the switch to more freighters and cargo in cabin operations. But we do continue with business development though. We have opened an e-commerce fulfillment center to enable our airline customers to capitalize on this growing revenue stream. And we are about setting up a new aero hand engine handling center with upgraded capabilities to enable us to expand this business, which already handles an average of two engines per day. So exciting times ahead. Will you tell us about how did you actually respond and react to the crisis right at the, the beginning of 2020? I believe uh, Hong Kong came into lockdown uh, in early February. And over a period of the, of the following months, uh, how did that response and reaction change? Our first priority was always about staff safety and well-being. At that critical juncture, we issued all staff and we continue to do so with PPE and hand sanitizers. Of course, we immediately started monitoring all staff and visitors before they were allowed entry into the terminal and regularly rechecked the temperatures during the shifts. We banned all meetings and business travel, and we switched to tele and video conferencing, removed all admin staff to home working. And for those staff who had to come back to the terminal to work, we created smaller work groups. We are also the very first company in Hong Kong to install a touchless elevator button panel in the passenger lifts in our terminal to reduce the risk of virus transmissions. Business continuity was fully achieved through protecting staff and by changing procedures to enable remote decision making. We also switched to digital billing and I have to thank my partners for helping us to do that. Now, of course, our business changed overnight. There was a huge increase in the number of freighters to be handled and we broke the freighter handling record in 2020, thankfully. This business went a long way to compensate for the catastrophic loss of scheduled passenger flights. But most of the additional flights were charters. And understandably, they often turn up with minimal advance notice and required fast turnarounds. I must say we were also called on to handle freighters that we have never seen before, such as the C-130 Hercules and Boeing's enormous Dreamlifter. 
Our recent investments in streamlining and digitalizing ramp operations really paid off, enabling us to handle more traffic very much with the same manning and resources. The sudden advent of our cargo and cabin operations brought its own challenges as well. Instead of palletizing loose cargo for bellies only, we also had to load containers to transfer to the passenger ramp, where the passenger handlers then unload those and manually place cargo on seats and in bins. And because this was a time-consuming and labor-intensive task, we were required to deliver cargo some four to five hours earlier than usual. Wilson, uh, the pandemic offered uh, an opportunity as well as it's one of the biggest challenge because all of a sudden you saw the belly capacity completely disappearing and you have uh, you have seen a sharp spike in the, in the freighter operation and you're talking about freighters, the pure cargo planes, as well as the cargo only passenger planes. Uh, how, did you, how did you manage to allocate resources accordingly to make sure that turnaround time was, was minimum and then you were able to kind of fulfill uh, the customer demands? Well, I think, well, firstly, um, I think pretty much during the entire pandemic, uh, our operations has remained nonstop. I think that's very important. And secondly, I think, uh, and I have to thank my business partners for that and all the airline customers, we remain in very close communications. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, um, planes, you know, a, a lot of the charters in particular, uh, do come in with minimal notice and all of them require fast turnarounds, which is also one of the uh, phenomena uh, which we see now uh, with increasing crew quarantine measures. But it was thank to, um, it were, we were thanks to close communications, um, very you know, uh, uh, meticulous and precise uh, manpower planning and all the cooperation from my guys out there, which I'm truly proud of all the efforts. Uh, and as well as the, uh, coordination and liaison with the ground handlers. For them, you know, they have to handle the cargo in cabin as well, that we were able to handle every single flight that came through Hong Kong. Are you able to plan your uh, operations well in advance or is it, is it even now a challenge to kind of respond in, in a very short notice? We still address many changes at short notice. I think um, this really is a trend or a new normal that we now see. And this new normal is not going away uh, within a short period of time, but we are adjusted to it. I think at Hactel, one thing we firmly believe in is that we have to be ahead of the market. Uh, and that's something which is why we have continuously uh, invest a lot in our systems, invest a lot in our, in our people. And of course, thanks to the coordination of everyone and with our business partners as well, we made it and we are still making it. Um, our goal is to ensure that, you know, our purpose is simple, I think, Reggie, in, in, in Hactel. Our purpose is to ensure that the air cargo supply chain of Hong Kong, and that because Hong Kong has been the, uh, the busiest uh, cargo airport for 10 years, as you rightly mentioned during the introduction, um, if we can continue to serve our customers and all the stakeholders, the air cargo community will continue to function. This is our mission. And uh, we will never lose sight uh, of what we set out to do. Listen, if I were to ask you to identify one or two biggest challenges as of now, what would they be? I think um, Hong Kong and Hactel uh, were better positioned than most, I think, to cope with the extraordinary issues uh, of 2020. That, of course, include the huge volumes of PPE and the extreme urgency. But going forward, I think the real challenges are for our industry as a whole. Some of them are, will passenger traffic ever return to pre-COVID levels? How long will this take? How do we maintain cargo capacity until the recovery takes place? These are some of the questions which we have to answer together as an industry. Wilson, have you seen an increase of volume of various types of cargo commodities over the last few months? I'm not even suggesting that uh, are we, do we have the volumes uh, pre-COVID, but have you seen the volumes getting back to the uh, very reasonable volumes in the last few months? Yeah, it's a very good question, Reggie. Obviously, I think the PPE was a major feature uh, of traffic in 2020, particularly as we saw from March to September last year. It has now eased off for us, but we expect significant continuing volumes as extra precautions for public health will stay in place globally for some time to come. There was, for us, also significant boost in cargo connected uh, with working from home, such as printers, 
laptops, iPhones, along with leisure electronics such as game consoles, believe it or not. The other significant growth was in e-commerce. So many countries have gone through lockdowns and high street stores have been closed for a non-essential trade. Now consumers really had no option but to switch to online shopping. And we were quick to spot this trend and react with the opening of our new fulfillment center. Now, since we are on the on the subject of cargo commodities, um, is business as usual uh, at your uh, special cargo handling facilities? I think um, it's, it's, we are well spot on. I think the current situation could never really be described as business as usual. Um, and this is our new normal. We have to learn to live with it. Uh, a return to the old familiar ways, of course, would be nice, uh, but seems increasingly unlikely now. I must say thanks to the team. I'm really proud of them. I'm grateful that Hacktool has survived at Intake. Okay, another to another, uh, an important uh, subject matter, regulatory and policy interventions uh, during the pandemic and the course of the last one year. For example, uh, the Hong Kong's uh, strict restrictions regarding crew quarantines impact cargo operations uh, and volume of cargo coming in and going out. Uh, was, there a, was there an impact on that? Yeah, I think Hong Kong um, is not the only place which has imposed strict restrictions on aircraft crews in light of COVID-19. I must say we recognize that the government must make constant adjustments to control measures as the pandemic situation evolves. There may of course have been some issues initially, but they were overcome quickly. So I would say generally speaking, the industry has responded with great resilience and versatility to necessary changes uh, in policies and regulations to contain the spread of the virus. Overall, I think the anti-pandemic measures have had little impact on the volume of cargo moving in and out of Hong Kong. So we are so far so good. Okay, on to the COVID vaccines. Uh, we have seen the movement of uh, COVID vaccines since uh, December. And uh, what has been the role of Hactel in the handling of COVID vaccines uh, that passed through Hong Kong? Uh, did you do anything specific uh, or special in terms of facility building or facility or capacity building for this particular cargo commodity? Hacto uh, was one of the first handlers to actually fully equip for temperature sensitive pharma traffic. And we were the first in Hong Kong to achieve the WHO GDP and the IATA CEIV pharma certifications. Our investment in resources, the streamlined processes and the golden route fast track mean that we are actually fully ready for whatever volumes of vaccine may transit Hong Kong. Now I must say so far there's been relatively little of such traffic, but it's still early days, but we are ready. You know, Wilson, um, Hactel has been, uh, or has the unique distinction of having a lot of uh, global standards. And uh, I like to highlight the, having all the three IATA C certification for Pharma, Fresh and Live. How have these certification helped Hactel to provide uh, value addition and subsequently increase the volume of cargo handling? I'm not just talking about the last one year of the pandemic, but ever since you managed to get these certifications in Hactel. I think it's difficult to quantify just what, this in, uh, what the impact from this certification had had for us. Uh, but obtaining these certifications is not simply about generating more cargo. We remain committed to best practice and air cargo handling. So any new and relevant standard is naturally one into which we aspire to. Now for us, it is all about being the best in our business, being the best that we can be and equipping our airline customers with the best tools to do their job. If our actions also help them to generate more business, then we are very happy. But I must say, I think Hacto has been in the business of handling these special cargo for decades. So I would say, you know, um, compliance to and uh, getting certifications to these standards do help, but we do not particularly track, uh, you know, the, uh, the amount uh, of additional or the incremental uh, cargo that we received. What we would say is that we are ready, should, and when these uh, special cargo comes through, which we are confident that they will. You know, uh, individual stakeholders in any industry, and in, in our case, in the air cargo industry, they play a very significant role in terms of uh, creating global standards uh, because you set a very high benchmark 
as a result, that becomes a kind of benchmark for the industry. Uh, in this regard, there have been efforts by IATA to standardize uh, cargo handling operations, uh, and Hactel has been playing a very significant role in creating and setting global benchmark. Tell us about what changes have taken place uh, and what can we expect in the future. Hato is proud to be an active member of both the IATA Cargo Handling Consultative Council, the ICFC, as well as the IATA Special Law Task Force, providing our expertise to help develop best practice and standardization in air cargo handling and acceptance. And that includes in areas such as cargo electronic messaging and the IATA manuals. Now, one of the initiatives that um, are currently in progress is working with the IATA Special Law Task Force to establish operational guidelines for the air transportation of turbine engines on engine stands, which is an area requiring industry-wide standards and best practice to ensure efficient and safe handling of this high-value special cargo. Our mission on helping the industry will not stop, so we continue to contribute um, and benefit from these initiatives. On to another um, IATA program, which is a Smart Facility Operational Capacity Program, which is again where uh, Hacktel plays an important role, uh, which is designed to reduce complexities and duplication of audits for cargo handling facilities. What has been, if you can bring us up to speed with uh, what has been some of the latest development on this trend? Well, again, I think, um, thank you for the kind compliments. I think supporting an industry is, is something which we um, always do and we will continue to do so. Hacktel actually acted as a pilot site uh, for these new initiatives. I think as a cargo terminal with some hundred customers, uh, and thanks for the introduction earlier, I think we are, or at least were pre-COVID, subject to more than 100 separate audits per annum. So we naturally would welcome any move to reduce complexity and duplication of auditing efforts. Now, of course, we appreciate that different stakeholders may have different considerations, but we would definitely welcome and support all initiatives that help the industry become more efficient. Saying that though, I welcome everyone to come to Hong Kong and to um, you know, visit and to spend money in this vibrant city. Uh, which we are proud of a place which we call home. You know, today any conversation is, uh, is incomplete uh, without making a reference to e-commerce and its impact on uh, logistics or impact on air cargo, because all of us are actually uh, ordering a lot of stuff online. You did make a reference already about e-commerce in, in, an earlier, in an earlier answer to a question. Uh, coming to e-commerce and the surge of cross-border e-commerce volume, how is Hactel building capacity to, do, to deal with the rising volume of packets? E-commerce is something which we have been uh, looking at, I think, for uh, quite some years now. And Hacto's value-added logistics arm, Hakers, is the part of our business that accommodates this traffic. The new e-commerce fulfillment center is the latest step in tooling up for this growing sector, but they have been active for some years. Now, for example, providing a cost-effective alternative export gateway for China mail traffic containing e-commerce electronics with customs compliance procedures. This traffic amounts to several thousand bags per day and has brought valuable extra traffic and revenue to Hacktoe's airline customers as well. So e-commerce, we are ready. We'll continue to uh, help you know, uh, facilitating that because that's a trend which we see will continue to stay with us. Going with e-commerce, uh, another topic of discussion is the, is the automation process in uh, cargo handling. Uh, tell us about your thoughts on automation of cargo handling on the ramp and at the terminal. Uh, what do you think about the use of robotics for cargo handling and what, is, what are some of the plans for Hacktel? We believe that it is the way forward. But for Hacktel, I think it has been a, why, a way of life uh, actually for decades. Our Super Terminal 1, which I'm in now, sets new standards in automation when we opened back in 1998. And we have since enhanced that with new equipment that adds additional layers of sophistication, such as our know, smart cargo locating system, which is actually a step towards facilitating full automation in some manual handling processes. At the same time, we have just opened an automated part store to help our engineers pick part of our massive handling systems. And this is an interesting trial of robotics that will teach us some valuable lessons. For us, automation is not about replacing workers. It is about tackling the constant problem of recruitment to accommodate future needs. There is not an ideal stage, I think I must say, 
um, to add to on you know, full automation. We are here to learn as well as to build our capacity as well. I think previous speakers on your you know, wonderful stream of episodes have highlighted and added to it. Um, and at Hacto, we'll continue to do our fair share to help the industry move forward with automation. Future of freight is uh, going to be digital and the pandemic has only accentuated the need uh, to accelerate the pace of digitalization in air cargo industry. Uh, what are some of your thoughts from a cargo handler's perspective? Well, you're so right, uh, Reggie. I think um, digitalization of processes is absolutely vital for the industry. We need systems that talk to each other, pass information, and make that information available to all the relevant parties, including ultimate customers. COVID was a wake-up call for the industry. Hacto's ability to continue functioning fully in the way it did was very much down to our advanced processes. The whole industry needs to take this subject as seriously as we do, and we'll continue to move forward with it. Finally, what do you think uh, 2021 will look like for the air freight industry? Well, this is uh, the million dollar question, uh, Reggie, or maybe the billion dollar question. Um, in growth terms, I do not expect major increases in 2021. Growth in e-commerce and pharma is currently taking the place of other markets that are currently subdued due to what really is a global recession. This recession will end in due course, as recessions always do, but it will take time. Governments must eventually reduce or stop their support measures, and that could have an impact as well. But realistically, I think there will be a lot of headwinds as the global economy tries to recover too and grow beyond pre-pandemic levels. What we are trying to do as Hactol and what our workforce is committed to is that whatever the volumes, whatever the types of goods that may come through, that we are ready to fulfill our purpose. That is to keep the air cargo supply chain going, not just for Hong Kong, but for the world because that's what Hacktal is here for. Wilson, it was a pleasure talking to you, and uh, we like to thank you for your time, sharing your thoughts on a wide variety of subjects uh, that matter to air cargo industry. Thank you, Reggie, for inviting me, and congratulations again on a very successful series. That was uh, Wilson Kong, Chief Executive of uh, Hong Kong Air Cargo Terminals Limited, or Hacktal. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our videos. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We bring you a special conversation with the leaders who move air cargo. I will see you next Monday. Thanks once again.